Okay, so now just the last step, and this is optional. If, if you're working with a vendor directly, you don't need to do this because you'll, you'll talk to them about it. But working with a client that will then supply files to a vendor, you, I often want to give them a style sheet. So something that they can see how it, they envision the logo being used on, different, on a different background than just white. So, for instance, so that the white kind of shows up um, ar around it, the offset. So what I do is I simply make copies of each of these with the background I created turned on. And you'll see that it's the exact same name, but it's called with background. I've saved two of these already. So there's my number four with a background. And there's my number five with a background. And I've decided I don't want to show them the, the pedagogy conference subtext at all. So, so now I'm just going to open these, actually all three of these, in Illustrator. So the simpler solutions, the no color ink solutions. Then I simply go through each one, turn on the background, say save as. And at the end of it, so they show up alphabetically, just add with background. I tend to really take advantage of, of Mac's of ability to have really long file names. At least until we've kind of edited it down to what the, the final solutions are going to be. It's helpful for organization. Okay, so that's that one. My color guide out of there. Now this one, just turn on the background. It also helps you see if there's any kind of stray uh, vectors you hadn't caught before. Of course, at this point, you don't want to have to make any changes because everything is, is unified. Now, actually, what I like about this solution of the five, and you'll see it on the style sheet when I put it all together, what I like is that the NLC is black in all of them. Everything else changes a little bit, but the NLC itself, it stays very recognizable. So the last one, here we go. And that is for one identity. <laughs> this could be one t-shirt design, one logo design, you know, whatever it is. Um, that's five different EPS options. All that Basically, this would be just with one ink, this is with black ink, this is with black and white ink, this is with black and white ink but done with a gradient, this is with black and white ink and green, this is with black, white ink and blue, and really it could be a four color process if they wanted the best kind of gradients of colors. All right. So now we can close these. We organize them. So I'm looking for the end with background here. My one, there's my two, there's my three, and these are all my pieces that got to the process, right? But all those options, gosh, look at all those. All these options have been messed with and then improved upon, and so they're all in that each final EPS, all the solutions are embedded in each EPS. It's just which layers are turned on and off. And because of that, each EPS is bigger than it would need to be otherwise. But still, they are quite small files in terms of uh, scalable resolution image files. So they're, they're each going to be about 6.3 6 megabytes, which is enough to email. Now the danger is when clients open up an EPS and accidentally save it as something else before they give it to a vendor. So you always have to make clear that this isn't the way that clients should view it. And that's why I make a style sheet in Photoshop. So I'll show you how I do that. I'm going to open up a new, new image. I'm going to try to use the default, or I guess the custom that I usually set up, 8 by 10 inches by 350 by RGB. I should have titled it, but that's okay. Now I'm just going to use simple layouts that we've learned. I'm going to turn on my, my uh, grid by using command apostrophe. Use my move tool, click on the ruler, make a little center aisle, and then decide, okay, where do I want 
my logos to line up. I want them a half inch from the top, a half inch from the bottom, and a half inch from the center. I'm just winging this, seeing if this is going to work. So it will nest them. Okay, then I can turn off the grid, and I see, okay, I want the solutions in this column and the backgrounds with that solution in that column. And I just start dropping them in, drag and dropping them from the desktop. My zoom is not working for me. Yes, I need to place it and then I can zoom. Okay, now I'm going to transform it. Remember, these are smart layers. So I'm holding down shift. It will lock. I hit return. Then I bring in the one with the colored background. Line its corner up. Hit shift. And bring it in. Now because the colored background is bigger, I'm going to allow that to go right to the middle line. So there's a half inch between these. As long as you standardize it, it will look nicely professional. Let's find where the bottom of that is, and then let's give a, a little bit of space there. I can always grow the canvas if I need to. I'm going to turn the grid back off. Okay, now the white solution. Now often on the white solution, with the offset, I will use the layer style to give it a stroke. Or not a stroke, rather a drop shadow, just so they can see that there's white around it. So they can see how this one is different than this one. Because on a white background they won't be able to see it. Now of course on the background they'll be able to see it. So how do I do that? I simply double click on that one and I'm going to turn on the drop shadow effect and make it not as dramatic as the last time I used it. Let's actually make it pretty subtle, just so they can see that the white is there. Like if you were selling a, a sticker online and had to show it on a white background. So something like that versus that. All right, because this one isn't supposed to have gradients. Right? The next one will bring this in, but then it shows that clearly here. But that background with its gradient, it kind of messes with your perception a little bit. It makes you think you're seeing gradients in the white. So that's why I don't only show clients images with backgrounds, because that can be misleading as well. So I like to show it both. And if I know what it's going to be used for, let's say like a blue t-shirt, I would actually have that background be a t-shirt texture. And I would actually build that in Photoshop. Okay, so those are two solutions. Right. So I'm going to say File, Save As. These are my NLC Pedagogy Conference Logo Style Sheet mock-ups <laughs> one let's go ahead and copy all of that so I don't have to type it again to the desktop save now I'm going to keep all of those in there but I'm going to group them all together that's group one and now I add the next So how do you present your vectors in a print portfolio in a way that's professional and clean? Well, this is a good way. And I just have to split the difference a little bit for the size there, because I want that to match, but because of the extra outline, it's just a slightly different. Hit return, and we can see how that matches up. So I can go a little smaller. But as long as they look clean, you're, you're fine. They're not going to be putting these under a microscope. A little larger. 
and your EPSs, remember, will always render to the native resolution. Yeah, that works. All right. And then all of these should sync up nicely because it's the same background behind all of them. Stick it in that corner. If you just hold down shift, it will shrink towards a corner. If you hold down option and shift, which is what I usually do, it shrinks towards the middle. Okay, and then this one. And then designers always have a favorite. You know, I'm happy with all of these. I want them to use whichever one they like. But I have a favorite. My favorite is usually going to be the full color. You know, the one that's most expensive to print. It's just the designer's prerogative. So in this case, I get to have that on its own sheet at the end. So that's not bad. Let's make that a little bit bigger. All right, and then this one, almost there. Now, why do I use this funky kind of hand-drawn circle behind? To me, it contrasts nicely with the precision of the logo. Um, it's not that I actually want them to have that circle in their solution. But it helps them understand that this is a, a variable background that they could use. <clears throat> like that could represent a, a tote bag or a mouse pad or a mug. And I actually don't even love the color, but it, it helps set off the green and that will do the work. Okay, so now I can turn off group one and then save this as my second mock-up sheet to the desktop. Move all those together into one group. Now notice my second one has both groups in it. So I just need one Photoshop file for everything. That's always helpful. And now I'm just going to do my favorite solution, top bottom. And a little bit bigger. Center it there. And now that it's in there, I can use guides so where the bottom is, I can turn off group two, I can turn on the grid, make sure there's half an inch between that and where I start the next one, and I'm going to center the next one there, showing how it would look on a background. Use option here. If you move the center, then it will grow towards the center. That's a little annoying. Or transform towards the center. Okay. Place that. Turn off the guides. Yes, I think I, I, I can select both of them, maybe move them up slightly. And then file save as, this is number three. And that's my preferred solution. That's kind of the one I want them to, to choose and get excited about, but then they see all the different cost options. So I have three style sheets. I'll save each of these as a JPEG. That is less than five megabytes. <clears throat> so even as a large file, it's only two megabytes. And then you send those to the client, and then they're, they're happy. They're good to go. And then you give them the EPSs and tell them very clearly how they are to use those. Just basically give them to the vendor without opening them up. That's all there is to it.